Welcome back to another painting session. We'll be doing another tutorial for today. And just with the last tutorials, I have taught you something that you should be able to use if you choose to spray paint like me. The first video was how to use paints. The second was how to control the newspaper. And this video will be based, well not really based, it will just showcase some of it. How to handle and shape your newspaper. Because there's two things that are crucial to making a planet with spray paint as the, um, what is it called? Um, the mode of paint. <clears throat> and that is the paint itself and the texture, which is facilitated by the newspaper. Now, the color for today will be blue, and I will be doing, uh, it was showcased in the video before, uh, which I painted a landscape based on calcium. If you haven't seen that, I think it is fairly good. Of course, that's just coming from me, but I think it's pretty all right. But in that video, and in that painting, I had a planet style that I haven't used for some time, and some of you would like to use it. I don't really know what type of name I should give it, or if it really does have a name that anyone does use. It's kind of just used as like I don't know how do you even put it. Like the fractured texture, like snowflake texture, what have you. It's kind of just known as that weird texture that's used. But uh, I think I'll just call it the fractured texture. I think that's what I'll call it. Now I'm just going to have the outside here and then we will get started. First of all, I hope that all of you are having a brilliant day. And I hope that this video and tutorial will make that day or night even better. If it has, do please tell me by liking the video, commenting what you like, what you don't like, and of course subscribing to the channel if you like what I do. Now, let's get started. The first thing I'll have to do is get the paint down. Let's get this. I'm gonna, more. I'm gonna get some extra paints. Here we are. Just some darker paints to use. Forgot that I put them away. Okay. Here we are. So like I had said in the first tutorial of these, just with a linear style paint. You just want to have your layers here pretty nicely. You don't need to spray a lot, just spritz to avoid clogging. Of course, if you want to know more in depth, just watch that first tutorial painting. The painting is of a green tannet with tannish clouds for the top. Yeah, I go much more in depth about the color usage and how it's layered to make the desired effect. But of course, you wouldn't be able to make that effect if it weren't for the newspaper or plastic or whatever you're using. Of course, I use newspaper, newspaper as you've seen through all of my videos, but some other people, they use plastic bags, um, plastic wrappings, what have you. It's simply what is available to you and what you think handles best. They all have their own unique textures. I'll not take away from any of that, but they all have their unique purposes and unique textures that go along with them. And I just think that the newspaper is better for me and for my style. It produces both a fantastical <clears throat> and a realistic style of texture that you really can't get with anything else. And that's why I use it. So now I'm going to be having the middle coat here. Oh my god, I have to shake these up. And as said by other videos, to get upside down and upright interchangeably. Shake them like you would maracas. Oh. So just tipped its can over. Don't mind me. Okay. You don't have to be that fast how I am. I'd much rather you go a bit slower, but of course I know how to do these things a bit better. 
so I've been able to optimize when and where I tap the spray can. Okay. Now I'm going to have the sub top layers. I know I'm just having these stupid names for the layering. Is there's for this painting there will be bottom, which was the dark, middle, which is what you see now, near the top, which will be white and off white. And I'll show you how they're different very, very soon once I get that top coat done. Okay. I don't mind the, the pressure on this as long as it's fairly even it doesn't really matter if it takes a while it's just I you'd rather have a better can because it's the can's fault that's doing that it's internally clogged something I, I don't know how to fix that's something that I preach about do not get it stuck and that's, that's why you do not want to get your internal uh, the interior of the can stuck as it's very difficult to fix them and now here is the unique part of the, about this painting. Just gonna move this and move this here. All right. So take your newspaper, like a square type shape, right? And then just fold it like this. Now hold it down on the ground. Hot dog stuff. Make sure you know this is the center. This is very important. Center is still there. Press down. Make a crease, center is still here, fold over, this is the center, okay? So now, we'll fold around that center, like this. Make sure that it is always pointed, orientated like you would, similar to a snowflake. And you have this, trump it up for some extra textures, just little cracks and seams. Once that is done, you simply unravel and look at the newspaper. What we will do now is we will take this, press it down like this, so it's pressing here. It's down on a paint, or it's still and move out with your hand here. The reason we do that is because the center likes to move a lot. And to prevent that, we can have a good hold on that center so it simply does not move. Now do not have it at the dead center of the planet. Have it kind of upright or up to the left for me. Okay. And once a good part of the newspaper is down, it will not move until you remove it yourself. Okay. Now I'm just removing and adding some textures here. Okay. Now we have this, right? But we need to do some extra stuff. How we do that is we just add it here. Um, yeah, kind of extending it, if you will. Here's why you 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 would preferably have a larger newspaper, as you would avoid all these. Okay, now we have this. We'll just crumple it up again and just just start it around. So now I have this dotted around, nothing crazy, just because there's a line here. I'm gonna get a different newspaper. Like I said, always have bigger newspaper. Don't do what I just did there. But it's fine. I'll fix it right quick. Because again, planet is going to be this big 
so I'd rather not have this sort of seam here. See? You can barely see it now. There we go. Of course, it's going to help with the shading. It's going to try to blur it. Okay, there we go. You see here, this is our center. And it fractures outward. Now there you have this. You will now do the shading and then shade. Of course, for shading, only spritz or only shake a little to have that desired low pressured. Um, what is it like? Low pressured look to it. up again to know where you're placing it and that looks about good hmm. very good and I will just have some gloss coat not a lot just a little bit and we'll now have this off to the side <clears throat> Now, there's not much for me to talk about that I haven't talked about in the other paintings, as I would advise you all to look at all of those. Now, they go more in depth in what I ever could in just this painting. And when I say painting, I mean this video as well. So uh, please excuse me as I mix those two terms up. But I do talk about something very in depth in each of the paintings, just as I've done here. But I'll talk a little bit more and then I'll skip it to its worst dry. So I'll bring up some other papers here. All right. So I'll show you how I got the other textures of the first and second tutorials. Again, I do advise that you watch all those. I'll probably have it in the cards above at any time. It doesn't have to be now, but you've probably seen it. Okay. All right. So take this, right? This is for linear for the cloud textures. You fold it in. Oh, there's a bit of paint here. I'm just gonna hold it up then. Fold it over, don't really crease it. Fold it again. Get down like this into quarters. And once more. Then you have this, right? You go folded, stick. That's what you got. Now with this stick, you take your hands like this, like so, and then you crumple down ever so gently. Once you feel comfortable, start escalating the pressure you're having with your hands to the stick of newspaper. Once you feel that you have had enough texture, enough creases and lines, like I do, let go and unravel. Okay, yep, here we go. And this is what you have. Of course, it's sticking to each other because there is paint here. But other than that, it should be perfectly fine within each other. So as you can see, there's a lot of lines, creases, texture, and all of it is parallel to each other. If you want some more texture, you fold it in again, and crimple, and fold. And look again. Pretty good. Next one will be the gaseous texture of the last and second tutorial. What you do is just like last time, you fold it over, fold again, fold again, but this time don't scale up the trampling too much. Don't do it a lot like half the time and half the pressure. Once you have that done, see now that the folds and textures are much more wider, more sparse apart than the last one. I'll bring the other one for comparison. See, for that fracks where you can see the shadows. 
then see this one. It's almost half. This is what you'll use to make that texture, just like this. That's a pretty dumbed down version of what I did for the, la for, um, the last tutorial, but that's usually how you do it. And likewise, for the linear texture, you hold it down, make sure it's in the paint. Swipe here. Now you do it like this, as you have a circular motion to your clouds and to your texture, making the illusion that it looks 3D. Don't just do straight, make it curved to have that illusion. I'm going to put these away. The tutorial after this one will go more in depth about the color and the usage and the layering and why it's important to color. Uh, much more than the first tutorial. Although they would both be coloring, just like this video and the second tutorial were both about the newspaper. They'll have their own subcategories about them. And that fourth one will be the last planet tutorial that I will have, as there's not many other textures other than the linear cloud texture the gaseous gas giant texture, the fractured um, snowflake texture, and the moon texture. Those four are the only main ones, usually just three, because not a lot of people use the fractured texture because it it's a, looks a bit wonky usually. So people just kind of avoid it, including me. But yeah, just four. There's some other unique ones like crackle, marbled, and what have you. Um, but those usually don't look so well, except for crackle, if you use that, right? And it's very dependent on the paint because crackle paint is not just a texture, it's the type of paint usually supplied by like Montana Colors, a European spray paint brand. Um, I do have a green one, but I don't really like it. It doesn't really work that well for me anyway. I, I've tried it, it just doesn't do well. Usually because you need like a good fire to do these things. And I, it is not a good idea to have a fire in a garage. So I don't, I, I don't do that. I try to avoid it. Uh, so there is that cracker one, which is pretty interesting. Uh, it, it's a, as you would imagine, it's cracks. Like you would see it like uh, dried up dirt, dried up ground uh, where there's a drought like that that type of texture um, but yeah the linear gaseous uh, fractal and moon textures are only really the main ones out there it's pretty difficult to you know find a new texture that isn't similar to those there are sub categories of these textures that I've used before but they look comparable to like the cloud texture, which is the most common one, as it's the most easiest. Uh, like one, um, I'll have two examples of subcategories. Like, you remember how I mentioned how, I'll bring this for example, how you should curve it up. You don't have to do that. You just do it like this to have both a linear and a gaseous texture along with you. So that's a subcategory, along with just warping it here. That's also a subcategory of the linear style. Of course, as this is a relatively new type of painting, uh, painting style, it has a lot of room for improvement and refinement for everyone. There is no clear master of all of these. Um, and even for like anyone, like let's say for me, I don't have that much experience. Uh, but let's say like, if I were to think them the best guy, I believe his French French guy, Anthony Paints, got a YouTube channel, he's really good at spray painting, I suggest that you watch him. Anthony Paints, I believe that's how you pronounce the channel. Uh, he does spray painting, he's very realistic with it, though it still has some room for improvement. Uh, some more details could be done. But to be fair, spray painting is, in and of itself, aerosol paints is relatively new. Uh, not only that, if you plan to do realistic paintings, Acrylic and oil painting is usually where you'd go. 
and spray painting, if you plan to paint it, is what I would imagine is in between uh, acrylic and watercolor, depending on how you use it. You could easily just make a very watered down spray paint and use it as watercolor, but it could easily be as thick as acrylic or watered down acrylic at that. Um, maybe oil is a better comparison. Eh, doesn't matter. Not to me anyway. Ah, maybe y'all got mad. Sorry. <laughs> but that's how I'll end off with this little segment. And then I'll cut back to when this is dry. Got the stencil on. Ready to get the space down. But I'm not going to be talking all that much. I don't... I... You know, I like the sound of my own voice, but I don't think you all do. You might. I don't know. Tell me if you do. I don't really have that uh, Bob Ross type voice, unfortunately. And the audio isn't that good. But maybe that'll change in the future. Who knows? I just think my painting's good. But that's enough about for me. Like I said, I'm gonna cut back to where it's all dry and whatnot. And once we're there, we'll get the space done. Tell you how to get that good space textures, um, color, and whatnot. We'll be done. And now that it's all dry, and got the stencil on it, we are now ready to make the painting, or the space around the painting anyway, to finish it. Now the astute eye may notice the type of weight I used. This is very important. Now even if I have stressed this far enough that I would do it again, even if the paint seems quite dry, always be cautious when laying down your stencil and especially your weights. Too much weight even for an hour long dry piece can still stick to the stencil that is detrimental to your painting and your planet. Now, <clears throat> some, perhaps if you used it well, maybe you would be able to turn it around in a good way, but it's very rare if you'd be able to do that. Of course, you can prove me wrong if you want. Um, just tell me if you do. I'd like to see if you'd be able to get stencil stripping in a good way. But usually it's something you'd like to heavily avoid. It is something that um, almost ruins the painting. But I won't talk about that too much. Stressed it enough. Anyway, I am going to start the space around with some dark navy blue. Again, spritz, don't spray to avoid clogging and to have a better control of where you are. Alright, now that I have that done, I'm going to do some ink blue, a tint above navy blue. Out of this will be a tint above for that. And you spray around in no particular order. Some people just make streaks along with it. I'd like to do a bit more, um, how would you say, not really realistic, but more detailed approach. Doesn't make me better. Doesn't make me lesser. And even for them as well. This is what I think is better. For me, anyway. But now I am doing that deep blue here. And do excuse the howling in the back, that's just the wind. A bit windy today, but I'm quite fine in this, in this garage. Now that you have all of that done, just do one more. Do some Oasis Blue, which is a, a lot of tints above. This will be the last step for just an old base face. Okay, here we go. Oh, that's, that's not good. Mm. The, um, uh, the pressure seems to be a very bit off, unfortunately, it would seem. But I'll just use another paint. But because it was, this is glass, so why is it doing this? It's too high pressure. Well, I don't like that, so uh, I'm going to cover that up. 
this this yucky. I don't like that. It's too way too grainy. Now this is a good lesson about how you can cover things up very easily. Of course, if this was too much paint, it'd be very difficult. You'd have to wait. But it isn't that much paint, so I could just go over it again. You could still, somehow, still add to the overall texture if you cover it up just right. It doesn't have to be all the way, just enough where you don't see it a lot. Chips, and now we're done with the base base. Next up, we will deal with the stars and the comets. Now, always wear a glove for this, as it is a real pain to get paint off, and very easy too, as you can see from my already painted up hand. Very difficult to get spray paint off of yourself, so always take preventative measures against this. Prevention is much easier than curing the issue. Mm. Should I use Ocean Mist or Aqua? Eh, Aqua's fine. I don't. I don't want to do that high tint. These are the colors, by the way. I know the cans look scuffed because I paint around them. And paint does get on them, so my cans never look nice, unfortunately. But the paint themselves that comes out of them is perfectly fine. Now, I've thought in the other videos, but I'll do it again. And I'll always continue to do so. I have my hand up top, where you cannot see, about three to two to three feet above the painting. So, that when I do flick it, the air cuts already big globs of it into smaller ones, smaller stars. I do a few pre-flicks to make sure the bigger globs are staved away. Get closer if you want more paint. And stay away if you want smaller. If you heard that, it was a sign going off. It seems to me I've been a false alarm though. Okay, I'm gonna keep doing this until I think it is a good enough texture to stop. Now I'm gonna get closer to focus on some areas that I missed. If your hand gets tired, no worries. It's good exercise. I'm just gonna take this off now and do some comments. Now these are going to be, let's see. Let's try ocean mist for this first. Okay, there you go. Now again, the comet creator, is what I call it, is a piece of paper construction paper, it could be thicker, then I would advise it to be thicker as it won't, the paint won't seep in as easily. What you do is you fold it halfway, then have the rest loop like this. This is the catch. It catches the paint. And when it catches the paint, excess goes all the way down, sprays into a fine layer into the shape of a comet. Like in here. There we go. And paint it every every session. One to three comets and always sweep up, never down. 
I do not want to create a stream. Alright. Now, the more I squeeze the comment creator, the more thinner the comments get. And if I widen my grip, the wider they get. Now, I do excuse my can. My blues have gone awfully uh, damaged, especially the lighter colors. They're quite old, as it were, and they're getting a bit too clogged. And that's seen right over here. <clears throat> and this little spray here. See how much blobs are on the side? You don't want that. Especially here too, that's very bad. This is what I mean by the paint globs. The stars are way too big. Um, I'll talk a little bit before I remove it to let the paint settle. I'll bring up a little lighter for it too. I only, don't only do this if the paint is too thick for you. This won't take long. But as you can see, I did fix up some mistakes. It's fairly easy to do so as well. But of course some mistakes you can only do so much with them. But again, if you feel that you could right your wrongs, don't be afraid to do so. No shame in doing that. No shame in trying to be better. Especially for me. That's what, all, that's what I always strive to do. I always strive to be better than I am today or tomorrow. I mean yesterday, of course. I always strive for better things. In order to put your thoughts, your feelings, your imagination onto paper. And to always strive for yourself for better things. To add more detail to yourself as you would to your paintings. That's what being an artist is all about. Developments, not just for you, but for the works you create. Seems like I'm stuck a little bit. Let's remove that. Come on. Come here. Please don't be messed up. Yep, it's stuck. This is what I mean by uh, it's sticking. See here? Way too much paint. And which I didn't wait long enough, so he got that, is what I mean. There's no way I can make this better. So it's just something I have to deal with now. It sucks. I'll put a gloss coat over it though. If, it's, it was, if it was deeper in, I could have just used a brush, but it's not. It's in that area where it still needs to be transitioning over to the non-shaded areas. So, unfortunate. Cautionary tale from Shane. Do as I say, not as I do, sort of thing. But, just gonna put my signature down here. I think the signature looks good. All right. That wraps it up. Move this over so you can see it's aligned pretty well. All right. If it wasn't for this, it would be fine. I, I, if you do the texture well, it looks very good. The fractal texture does have its perks as using it with blue paint adds a feel of frost and fractured ice onto the surface of the planets in which you plan to create. But most times it's fairly unrealist, uh, fairly unrealistic. But if you ever choose to do so, you know who taught you. This guy. But yeah, all in all, I think it's fine. Of course, some miss-ups, like this, I didn't wait long enough. And I added too much weight there and the bigger stars. But all in all, it's pretty all right. Quite proud of it. 
and I hope that you all are proud of it too. Not just about the painting, but under the tutorial as a whole. If you have been entertained and educated by this video, of course, please tell me if you have what you liked about this tutorial and what you didn't like in the discussion below in the comment section. If you liked the video, you could also just have a simple like and subscribe to the channel if you like what I do, which is, of course, spray painting and paintings, tutorials, what have you. I do plan to do much more of these, not just in planets, but in the orientation of planets, the order of them, and how they could be arranged in an artful style. Like linear nebulas, galaxies, um, lines of alignment planets, overlapping, underlapping, and what have you. But yeah, stay tuned for all of that, whenever that may be. And with that out of the way, I will bid you all farewell. Until next time, to the next painting session, whatever that may be, and I will see you then. Bye-bye.